It seems you can't have a conversation about electric vehicles without mentioning one magic word, range. Range is actually quite a simple concept, but as with any new technology, you need to get your head around a few things. So in this video, we're going to explain exactly what range is and tell you how to make the most of it. So first up, range is basically the measure of how many miles you can do before you need to charge the battery up again. So the numbers that you'll see quoted in our reviews and on vehicle brand websites are simply saying how far the van will go if the battery is at 100% and you drive it down to 0%. These are the independently assessed official figures, but they are done in a lab. So what you'll get in the real world could be less. They might also be more, especially if you drive a lot in towns, have a light load and it's a nice temperature like it is today. But these figures are there to give us a benchmark so we can compare apples with apples. So vans like this Citroen e Bilingo has a combined range of 213 miles. Now that's sometimes referred to as WLTP figure, which I'll be honest, I can never really remember what WLTP stands for. So what we'll do is we'll write it down there, down there, just in case you need it for a pub quiz or something. You should be able to achieve that figure in some conditions, but you shouldn't expect to get that on every journey, as the efficiency will depend on all sorts of factors. If you're driving around in mild weather with a lighter load, then you're going to do much better with your range. I mean, if you're also driving around town, you'll find your range is predicted better as well, and that's because you're driving slower and you're going to recoup some energy from your braking. If you're driving, let's say, more enthusiastically, and you've got the fans on full blast at 29 degrees and it's cold outside, yes, you will lose some range. If you see that lower figure, you might panic and think that you need a bigger battery, but that doesn't have to be the case. You see, having long range is a real luxury. I mean, you'll have to plug in less and you're gonna do way more miles because you've got a bigger battery, but you could choose a more efficient van and slightly change the way that you drive. More of that later. Bigger batteries in particular are very expensive and they add more weight, which will make your van less efficient and will cut your payload. So essentially what you wanna do is buy a van with the smallest possible battery to fit your needs. That way you're gonna save money and then you're not wasting energy from driving around with cells that you're not even using. This Ebelingo van, for example, has a 52 kilowatt hour battery. That seems like the Goldilocks porridge for most drivers, just big enough for most journeys without adding unnecessary weight. Now, don't forget, if you only do big trips every now and again, you can always stop at a rapid charger to top up. But it's worth just spending those few extra minutes topping up occasionally rather than carrying around a massive battery that you don't really need. I mean, there are other ways that you can stretch your range to travel just that little bit further before you have to top up and it will save you money as well. As you'll know if you've already driven one, electric vehicles are wonderfully easy to drive. And if you haven't, then check out our Electric Explained video that tells you all about what they're like. But even with this simplicity, there are ways in which you can tweak your driving style to help you get more from your battery. It's nothing too drastic, and it's actually great fun seeing how much energy you can save, especially as it's normally just wasted. Like this Citroen e Bilingo van, many electric cars have different drive modes. They help you maximize your range or have a little bit more power if you're not worried about efficiency. Now these modes will alter the way the car feels and how the energy is managed. So the power and the throttle response will change or the in-car functions like aircon and heating may end up being limited. By reducing the power draw on the battery, eco modes can help you go a little bit further with very little compromise. Now most electric vehicles will allow you to adjust the level of regenerative braking or regen when you lift your foot off the accelerator or when you're driving down a hill. 
Now when an EV does this, the motor that drives the wheels turns into a generator that puts charge back into the battery. And the higher up the level you go, the more energy you can recoup. Now in some Citroens, you'll have a B button down here that will just instantly trigger the regen braking and it means it will slow down much quicker as soon as you lift your foot off of the accelerator. This version that we have here has the flappy paddles here behind the steering wheel. So I can change the levels of regen braking and then as soon as I lift my foot off the accelerator, I can feel the feedback. I'll be honest, it takes a lot of getting used to, but I'm a fan. I'm a real big fan. I really like the idea of seeing energy go back into the car. It's very satisfying. It's a simple equation. The faster you go, the more energy you drain from your battery. Drive at 70 mile an hour and you'll use much more power over a distance than you would at 60 mile an hour. That's because factors such as wind resistance make life much harder for your motor and battery as your speed increases. Now, canny electric drivers know that if you take an A road and stick to 60 mile an hour, that gives some big range improvements. Oh yeah. If you use a route planning app, try selecting Avoid Motorways, and you'll often find that the A road route is shorter and more direct. Yes, you'll probably take a little bit longer to reach your destination, but you'll get there with more rain showing than if you took the motorway, or you might be able to avoid stopping for a charge. Give it a try. Unlike a petrol or a diesel engine, a battery vehicle produces less waste heat. So if you want warmth, you need to take the energy from the battery, which yes, will affect your range. But here's where you need to be smart. So instead of heating up the entire cabin, which will use energy, you're better off heating yourself. If you have heated steering or heated seats, use that. Or this might sound a bit counterintuitive, but if you turn down your degrees by one or two, it will significantly reduce the energy consumption. I promise you. Oh, another good thing is preconditioning. So you can warm up the vehicle while you're still plugged into your mains charger. So then it's not gonna be using the energy while you're out and driving. And the perks of a van is that. It's actually a smaller space to heat up. It's good, isn't it? So there we go. Hopefully you won't find the concept of range so strange now and you're up to speed with how to use every watt. If you want any more information about making the switch to electric, then make sure you check out our other Electric Explained videos on the site, because together with Citroen, we're here to help clear the air. <laughs>